Welcome, welcome everybody to the first of my Dark Cancer discussions here on my channel. This is your host, Neo Gentrix. You probably know me from my other uh, podcast subject topics and settings under the title Food for Thought, Thoughts If It Were You. Dark Cancer Productions will be taking over that whole podcast. I will still be your host. Don't worry about it. But the title and the logo may change. So just a heads up for the future. Today, I'm giving you all a short intro to a topic that I had a live discussion with some other people with. Um, I'm going to go ahead and upload those. So if it sounds a little off or it's a little rough, it's because this is a live talk with actual people. Um, not always will it be another, people, another person talking. It'll mostly be me discussing certain topics, just as before um, with uh, my Food for Thought podcast, except the difference here is that... Uh, people can interject at any time. It may happen in this episode. It may happen in the next episode. It may happen in the follow-up episode. You never know. Um, they These won't be as often. Actually, these may be more often than my regular podcast as I have to actually sit down, re research the topic I have to talk about, and then talk about it. So you might get more of these episodes than the others. So look forward to that in the future, and let's get started, okay? It's one of those things. A millennial. <laughs> People who consider themselves to be what, it, well, whatever society says is a good thing. I found that it doesn't really matter when you were born or how you do whatever it is you do. But as it turns out, it does matter. The definition of a millennial nowadays. <laughs> Anyone before Lauren, uh, what's it, 21 or older? <laughs> But then we're always blamed for everything. So let me, let, let me ask you this. I understand Gen Z is one thing and they're always doing whatever the heck they want to do. But then at the end of the day, the question is, are we still being identified as what we are? Or are we just trying to be what everyone else is? <laughs> I can look it up. It's, 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 it's not mm, like, let me see. We're known as Gen Y, <laughs> the demographic cohorts of Gen X, and preceded by Gen Z. It, it's nothing, nothing, nothing fancy, uh, apparently. We're supposed to be inept. We're supposed to be the smarter ones, I guess. Researchers, popular media, used in the early 1980s, starting birth years. Uh, what is the millennial? Uh, I'm one of them, to be fair. Uh, born mid 1990s to early 2000s. That's not really even clearly defined now that I think about it. Like, that could be anybody from 1995 and up, but that's wrong. I mean, anybody could be a millennial as long as they're born between the years of 1981 and 1996, I do believe. I was born in 93. I'm part of that generation, but then people look at me, they're like, oh, you're part of Gen Z because you were born in the latter half of the of 1990s. No, 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 no. Uh, my parents were a part of Generation Alpha, <laughs> born in, in the in the early 60s. But they, I, don't, I guess, young people have, like, what's the word I'm looking for here? If you're a millennial, chances are you've done a lot of different things that have been classified within our category. Everyone's different, but, but the general census, like, Anyone from the generation before us, to clarify, they are part of a generation where if you made it with somebody, you stayed with them for, I guess, a while, after about six or eight months, you would probably consider marriage. Now, if you're a millennial, you've been, you've postponed marriage, I don't know, three, four, five, six, seven times. You'll stay with the same person for maybe one, two, three years at the most. It, and, you know, it, it's one of those things where it just kind of makes you wonder like, who's the worst generation? Is it really us? Like, we've been labeled as the worst generation that came after Gen Z. No, Gen X. But we're not. We're actually the better generation. The worst generation would probably be Gen Alpha, but that's only because they get to grow up with what? Uh, I want to say 
they grew up with everything in front of them. Millennials are, we've been said that we grew up with a silver spoon in our mouth. We've had everything given to us. We've had, uh, we, we, we had access to the internet. We've had access to all these resources, but in reality, when we were born, the internet was start, still starting up. The main operating system of choice was Windows XP. I'm pretty sure everybody remembers that. You know, computers are starting to just now become accessible. I, I, I'm pretty sure if I can ask anybody, do you remember gateway computers? The little thing that looked like a cow uh, in the shape of a cube on your computer or compact computers, the one that looks like a red cube? Or how about uh, computer monitors that are square? <laughs> that look like CRT TVs, those old things you see in arcades. You're a millennial. I'm sorry. You are very rare, very, very rare where you find anybody from Gen Z born in 1997 that knows what that is. Most of them will, but it's like, I want to say maybe 15% because there weren't as many children born between 1997 and 2000. I would like to think there was, but there really wasn't. Like a lot of kids weren't really born until after 2000 in that weird category. And I want to say that during the time we were born, there was like a decline in the fertility rates around the world. So people were having fewer and fewer children and their children were having fewer and fewer predecessors because they just weren't mating. Millennials just don't like mate. Like we have had, I think the hardest time finding partners, but when we do, it's not like early in our years. It's not like in our twenties or whatever. We, we're not finding partners until we're almost 30 or 40 now. Like it's, it's been extended. I don't, like even me, I'm 28, believe that or not. And I still am not married. I've had a lot of different relationships in my opinion. It's been rough, like, because we're spoiled now. I can't say we are as millennials, but I, I can say the world is spoiled between Gen Z, Gen Alpha, and the ones that come after them. God knows what comes after Gen Alpha, but I mean, we, we, we as a group, everyone between 1981, 1996, my brothers included, they were barely born <laughs> into the millennial decade because they, they, they not decade, uh, let's see, that's, that's what, 15 years. Um, they were born in 95, so they barely fit into that category, but most of us, we can consider ourselves, I guess you could say the last of the storybook generation. Uh, let's see, oh, hello. So, I mean, there, it's different, it just depends. What's up, Michael? Hey, Joshua, how are you? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing good. It's what, one one twenty in the morning? <laughs> um, AM, whereabouts are you based? I'm what? As where currently are you? Within the world? You argue? Yeah, where are you within the world? Where are you where are you chiming in from? Where am I chiming from? Yes. I'm from I'm from Houston. I'm from Houston. I live in the United States. Oh great. I'm calling from Western Australia. It's two twenty four PM here, but originally from yeah. Bonnie, Scotland. <laughs> What's up? I like your accent. Oh, thank I, I, I I was kinda of thrown. Yeah. I was kinda of thrown. You're like, wait, I'm from Australia, but your accent says Scotland. Hundred percent. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> You nailed it in one. And thank you for the compliment. I have been practicing my whole life. So that's uh, much appreciated. Um, I just thought it was a great um, question that you had. What does it mean to be a millennial nowadays? And is it worth acknowledging? I think 100% because I'm a millennial. Um, and I think it's very much acknowledging the fact that the generation and what we are and what we got to experience, we got to experience the kind of like history, we're getting to experience history um, being made um, within what we've went through over the last kind of like lifespan of ourselves. And we should seek that opportunity now to make a better tomorrow. I think millennials have got a great opportunity to basically stop the cycle in respect to repeating the same mistakes and blaming past generation um, last generations and just going right okay you know what we'll fucking sort it out 
let's just sort it out. Let's just stop the fucking buck at millennials and we'll sort it out for everybody else. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on it. I mean, yeah, I mean, because, you know, with the, with the previous generation, with Gen X, the ones that came, like, right after the baby boomers, for those who even still have parents that were baby boomers, I have my dad. He was one of those. And my mom was part of, I think uh, she came a little bit later, so she was part of Gen X. So I have parents in both categories, and they grew up with their with their parents looking at us saying, you grew up privileged, you grew up with the internet, mobile devices, social media, so you had everything at your fingertips. So we were basically spoiled, so we grew up with that mentality that, yeah, we're privileged, we're this, we're this, we're this. But now, looking back, the millennials are the ones trying to take over so that the lost generation, the sound generation, and the greatest generation can finally retire, you know, aside from the whole, you know, issue from 2020 that's already killing off a lot of that generation, which is unfortunate. I mean, there are some peace, um, respect to them, to those who have lost any, first off, um, because I lost my grandma last October. Condolences. So, thank you. So, they set the precedent. They went through their trials. They went through their hells. My grandma used to tell me about how she grew up as the daughter of a of a, a lady. Who, of a, her mom was part of the, the slave period, so she grew up during that time frame. And a lot of that information and a lot of that stuff was passed down. But I'm in the mindset of okay, that was passed down. That happened. I don't live in that time frame anymore, but I'm going to learn from what you've done so I can make my life better. I don't want to live with the chip on my shoulder that, yes, they mistreated us. Yes, they treated us like trash. Okay, they did. That was then. They still treat us bad now, but now we can see it. Now we can fight it. Now we can actually do something about it. I'm not going to sit back and complain. And that's what I'm saying. Like, does it really mean, like, if we're going to acknowledge ourselves as millennials nowadays, which is what people want to brand us with a label, then that means we need to actually act our age and do what we should be able to do. We're considered the digital natives of the generations. Like, we were the ones who brought in the transition to what we are now, you know. Correct. But, um, and we, you know, we're, but, the way I look at it is that we were and are growing up um, in the prime of our existence in the last millennia and this millennia. So that's a special time frame within any, you know, like historic um, kind of artifact because it bases itself around time. And exactly what you've said is that we want to make sure that we learn from the past and we take on the information and we actually place into action a better tomorrow, not because people are holding you back, but you've empowered yourself to step forward and take it for what it is, a beautiful life that can be manipulated in such a way that you follow your dreams. You just need to take the leap and jump into it. And I feel a lot of millennials have led that way in the break of the cycle in respect to our heritage. And I feel that we're seeing that now within the new generations, certainly within Generation Alpha, um, which is my daughter, that's who she's a part of. Um, and the leap that she's taken in respect to that generational catapult of that way of thinking um, is going to be absolutely forever um, stood in time as this the beginning of the spike for true change and a better tomorrow for everybody. Yeah, because the problem that we have with ours is that, like you said, we have a bad habit of repeating the cycle. We see the past, but instead of growing from it, we repeat it. I mean, we're supposed to be civic minded, right? Mm -hmm. We're, we're, we're part, you know, learn from the GI generation that came before us, disregard stereotypes and move forward. But no, we end up falling into the seven basic traits that all millennial fall into special, sheltered, confident, team oriented, conventional, pressured, and achieving. If you're not in one of those categories, you're considered, uh, what's the word, alienated. And then there's the special set. That I think they made a movie based off of that. It's called Divergent. And what the few who fit into every category for absolutely no reason, they're the yeah. ones that get ostracized because you don't fit into a category. Our generation is the one that created these categories. Why do we have to be categorized? Good and as correct. a result, the, the following generations have picked that up, and now they think correct. that they have to do it. You have to be this. You have to be that. Yes. Um, no one said you had to be anything. The only generation that said that was the one that followed the Bible years ago. We've moved so far from following the Bible that even now saying that someone belongs to a category shouldn't even be a thing. 
I'm not saying that we should keep moving from it. That's a personal opinion. My family's Jewish, to be fair. You know, I live by the Bible standard, but I'm not going to push that on other people. I'm not going to make them do it. I'm not going to say, hey, uh, you said that you're no longer male. You're supposed to be a female, so and God's going to damn you. I'm not going to say that. Why? Because, one, society says that if you say that, you're going to get in trouble, and millennials don't like trouble. We, most of us try to stay out of trouble. We, we're we prefer rigorous evidence to prove that our case is true. So we fight for something that we believe is true and that's fine, but we need to also fight for what is ours. Like what rights do we have as people? And that differs from country to country. Like you said that you're from Scotland, but you live in Australia. You can see the difference between the, the rights of the people from both generations in those two countries. You know, in America, you have to be 21 to drink. For one, <laughs> but millennials don't care. They'll be drinking before they're ever eighteen. I do believe that's the case here. I don't remember. <laughs> so, but everybody's got their thing. You know, we grew up in the twenty-first century. We started everything out. It's just, you know, we're supposed to have the higher IQ. We're supposed to be better. And I guess it just, we've moved into a time frame that just doesn't call for this anymore. Like there are things, there are skills, there are abilities that we should have. And there, there just aren't enough people I'm not pushing that. Hearing you. Oh. oh, hello. You still there? No. I guess it keeps DCing me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Oh, you might have to rejoin. <laughs> um, but yeah, like we're not being taught what we should. There are cognitive skills. There are cognitive abilities. Like, let me ask this question. Like I said, like in my, in my questions, like what does I it think, mean to be a millennial nowadays? Like, I think huh? what. What you've actually highlighted. Well, let's, I think what you. I think what you've. I think what you. It's cutting, it's cutting in and out. Can you hear me? Ooh. Oh, okay. I'll wait till he comes back. Um, from left to right. <laughs> so, since the 2000s, how have we progressed? That's the question here, I guess. Malia, I, I want to say since 2000s, the millennials have basically taken advantage of the possibility of selecting more than one racial group in abundance and being part of them no matter what. Like, no one's stuck to any one category anymore. Everyone's part of something. But I feel like somewhere along the lines after our time frame ended, not the one that we were, not, not, not our personal time frame, but like the years that we were born into, going into the 2000s, something, something in the world changed. And I'm not talking about the 2008 uh, uh, stock market crash. I'm not talking about that um, or housing market crash. Like, cause after that, everything just kind of flipped up on its head. And then the, the incident from 20, from the early 2020s didn't make it any better. And that just flipped it back. So that made it worse. But now with the housing market being what it is, honestly, I, I can't say anything about it because, like I said, we're supposed to, millennials have experienced to experience belonging by seeking to impact the world in the best ways possible. But right now, they're not doing anything. There's a how there, there are jobs out there like for tons and tons of people, but we are not taking them. Why? I, I can understand the older generation can't do it. They're 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 up, up in age. They're locked to whatever skills they have, but we're not. So, you know, it's one of those things that 
it, it, it just, it hasn't progressed us forward in any direction, I want to say. It, it's just pushed us back in, in a way that, I guess you could say, caused us to regress. I guess that's what I want, I want, to, I want to say. Anyone have their own opinion, they're welcome to share. You can join in at any time. But, I mean, that's the question I'm asking. Like, what does it mean to be a millennial nowadays? Is it worth acknowledging, in your opinion, that you are one? Or would you rather everyone just look at you and be, consider you either part of the older generation or the younger generation? Do you want to be part of the crowd? Or do you, you, uh, do you wish to be your own individual self? Like, is it worth identifying yourself as separate?